Hello, my name is Eve. I'm a 3D artist and illustrator and in this Blender tutorial I'll show you how you can use shape keys to bring your characters to life. Shape keys, also known as morph targets or blend shapes, are a feature in Blender that allow you to deform a 3D model by defining a series of target shapes. These shapes can represent different states of the model, such as facial expressions. Most commonly, shape keys are used for facial animation or for correcting areas where your model doesn't deform well once it's rigged. So those are called corrective shape keys. Okay, now let's get into it. Before we start making the shape keys, just make sure that a few settings are turned on in Blender. Go to Edit, Preferences, Key Map. Then enable Tab for Pie menu as well as Extra Shading Pie menu items from here. After that, click here and save preferences. This will allow us to enter the different editing modes quickly by just pressing tab. Okay, all set. Now let me show you how to make shape keys in Blender. To start using shape keys, you need to have a 3D model. This could be something you've modeled yourself or a pre-existing object that you want to modify. In my case, I'm using this character that I created in my 3D course. If you're interested in learning how to model this specific character, you can find my course on Patreon, Udemy and Skillshare. Additionally, the finished character 3D model is also available on my Patreon. Okay, so what I'll show you in this tutorial is how to make a blink for one of the eyes. Once you have your model, you can start creating shape keys. To do that, select the object you want to make a shape key for. In this case, this is the head of the character. Here I've separated the head as its own object. After you have the object selected, click on this icon to go into Object Data Properties. Go to Shape Keys here. Click on the plus icon next to Shape Keys to add a new shape key. By default, this creates a basis shape key. The basis is the initial state of the object. It's just the original unedited position of the model, in this case the neutral facial expression. To add an additional shape key, just click on the plus button here again. That creates our first actual shape key. So the basis needs to remain untouched and then you work on all the additional shape keys. Double click on the second shape key and name it. Name it L top lid down. So that is L for left top lid coming down. Make sure you name your shape key so you know what each one does. We'll do a separate shape key for the bottom lid coming up. Having them as separate keys gives you more control over how the blink animates. Once you've added your basis key and your first shape key, it's time to actually modify the first shape key. Ensure you have the first shape key selected. Set the value from here to 1. After that, press Tab and go into Sculpt Mode or Edit Mode. Personally, I prefer to use Sculpt Mode for adjusting the general shape and Edit Mode for fine-tuning. I switch between both modes by pressing Tab. Ok, let's adjust the shape of the top lid now. Press Tab and go into Sculpt Mode. Select the Grab Brush from here. After that, press F to adjust the size of the brush. Bring the top eyelid down like this. Make sure that your brush is small enough so it doesn't affect the bottom eyelid. Also try to work from the front and side view to make sure that everything looks nice from all angles. Here you want to make sure that you're only adjusting the top lid and not affecting the bottom one. Nice, now our first shape key is all done. Press tab and go back into object mode. When you drag the value slider between 0 and 1 here, you can see that the shape key animates the eyelid. Here, although I was careful not to grab the bottom lid, you can see that the shape key actually still affects it and a bit of the side of the head here. This sometimes happens if you grab areas by accident. I'll show you how you can easily fix that now. 
To fix it, we need to make a new vertex group and assign only the vertices for the top lid in it. Then afterwards, we'll assign this vertex group to the shape key, which ensures that the shape key only affects those vertices. To add a new vertex group, click on the plus sign here. Name it by double clicking on it. Name it L top lid so you can recognize it. After that, press tab and go into edit mode. Press 1 for vertices selection and select all the vertices for the top lid. Here you can enable X-ray from this button so you can select vertices on the back of the model as well. Also, make sure to select the vertices on the inside of the eye as well. You can turn off X-ray from the same button. With all of the top lid vertices selected and the new vertex group highlighted, click on Assign here. That assigns the vertices to the group. After that, press Tab and go into Object Mode. Select the top lid shape and then from the vertex group here, select the new vertex group we just made. That ensures that the shape key only affects the vertices in that group. Now when you drag the value from 0 to 1, you can see that the side of the head and the bottom lid are no longer affected. Nice, that's our first shape key all sorted out. Next, let's add another shape key for the bottom lid and repeat the same steps. Press on the plus sign to add a new shape key. Name your shape key. Set the shape key value to 1. After that, press Tab and go into Sculpt mode. Using the grab brush, lift the bottom lid so it goes up. Here I want to show you how you can use Edit mode as well to make the shape key. Press Tab and go into Edit mode. I like to use the Proportional Editing tool to make shape keys. Press this button here to enable proportional editing. You also want to click here and choose Connected Only. That will only move the edges that are attached to the ones you have selected. Proportional editing allows you to move things with a smooth falloff around the selected area. Now press 2 for edge selection. Select one of the edges on the eyelash and then shift select one of the edges on the face. Now when you press G to move the edges up, you can see that you have a smooth falloff around the selected edges. Here you can scroll up or down on your mouse to increase or decrease the area the proportional editing affects. I scroll up on mine and then I move the bottom eyelid shape with G. I make sure to move it out as well so it curves nicely around the eyeball. At any point while working on your shape keys, you can press Tab and go into Object Mode to preview how both shape keys look together. Set the value of both the shape keys to 1 from the value slider in order to do that. You can then press Tab and go back into Sculpt Mode and continue making any necessary adjustments. Here you can actually see that the top lid shape key is affecting the bottom lashes, which is not what we want. That's happened because I've accidentally grabbed some of the vertices for the bottom lash and assigned them to the top lash group. You can easily fix that though. To do that, first select the top lid vertex group here. Then press tab and go into edit mode. Press 1 for vertice selection. Shift select the vertices that you don't want to be affected. Then click on remove here. That removes the vertices from the group. Now when you press tab and go into object mode, when you turn the top shape key on, it no longer drags the bottom lashes with it. This is very handy to know when you're making multiple blend shapes and you only want a certain area to be affected. So it's very useful to know in case you make a mistake. 
After this I continue adjusting both shape keys so they look nice together. I adjust them in sculpt mode. I create another vertex group for the bottom lid just like we did before. To create the bottom lid vertex group, click on the plus sign to add a new vertex group. Double click to name it. Press tab and go into edit mode. Press 1 for vertices selection and select the vertices for the bottom left lid. Select the left eyelash as well. Don't forget to select the vertices inside of the eye as well. With all the vertices selected, click Assign here to add them to the new vertex group. After that, press Tab and go into Object Mode. Select the bottom lid shape key and from Vertex Group, assign the new vertex group we just made. This will ensure that the shape key only affects the bottom lid. Nice, now our second shape key is also done. Now the two shape keys work together to make a nice blink. Now you're ready to animate your shape keys. You can do that two ways. The first way is to add keyframes directly to your shape key values and animate those on the timeline. That's the most straightforward way to do it. The second way is to add drivers that drive your shape keys. Typically, this is the most common approach for animating shape keys. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to quickly add keyframes directly on the shape key values. On my Patreon, you can find an extended version of this tutorial where I show you more advanced shape key techniques, such as adding drivers. In this tutorial, I'll only show you the simple way. Okay, so ensure that the base mesh is selected and then go into timeline here. Move the time slider in the timeline to frame 1. Then set the values of both shape keys to 0. With the bottom lid shape key selected, hover your mouse over the value slider and press I to insert a keyframe. After this, select the top lid shape key. Hover over the value slider and press I to insert a keyframe. Now both shape keys values are set to 0 on frame 1 of our timeline. Now move the animation slider to frame 20. In the shape keys set the value slider to 1. Hover over the value slider and press I to insert a keyframe. After that set the value of the bottom lid shape key to 1 as well. Hover over the value slider and press I to keyframe. Now both of our shape keys values are set to 1 on frame 20. Nice, now when you scroll on your timeline you can see that we have an animated blink. And that is how you animate shape keys directly. That is all the basics that you need to know to get started with shape keys. If you want to learn more advanced shape key techniques like how to make drivers and how to make animation pose presets, make sure to check out my Patreon. There I have a more in-depth version of this tutorial where I show you shape keys in more detail. Here I also want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons. Thanks to you I can continue making these tutorials and more. I really really appreciate your support and I'm so grateful that you choose to be part of my little corner of the internet. If you enjoy my work you can support me by becoming a patron. I post exclusive tutorials over there, as well as behind the scenes of my animation project, The Magical Adventures of Gizmo and Oz. The link will be in the description if you want to join. And that is everything for this video. If you have any questions about the basics of shape keys, feel free to leave me a comment and I'll do my best to help. Thank you for watching, thank you for being here, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!